Welcome. Let me talk about an issue that actually drives me nuts as an algebra teacher for kids. So many curriculum want kids to memorize formulas and plug and chug when answering questions. And in quadratics, that topic is full of just memorization. Uh, for example, an algebra book might ask the student to examine the equ equation x squared minus 2x plus 2, and they might ask something like, um, how many times does this quadratic cross the x-axis? Now, kids are meant to know the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. And they're meant to know that this quantity under the square root sign is interesting, because basically, if that's a positive number, then I can really can take that square root, and I'll get two solutions. Um, if this quantity, I guess they call the discriminant, is 0, then there's only one square root. So it's the only number with one square root, in which case there's only one solution. And if this quantity happens to be negative, forget trying to take square roots, no solutions. So basically, an algebra book might have kids answer this question, how many times does this cross the x-axis? They're asking them, have they memorized the form of discriminant? And they're going to check whether it's positive, negative, or zero. Well, when I teach algebra, yes, I do derive the quadratic formula, but that's just for interest's sake. We do not memorize it. My kids will never know, well, I mean, of course they know it, but I'll never ask them to memorize b squared minus 4ac. I'd much rather test do they understand quadratics rather than testing have they memorized formulas? So, how would my kids answer this question? How many times is x squared minus 2x plus 2 cross the x-axis? Well, pictures. Pictures speak a thousand words. Let's just draw this thing. And that's pretty easy. And I like to focus on interesting x values. So let me just focus on the x part of this equation. And clearly I can see I can factor out an x from those two parts. So it's x times x minus 2, still with the plus 2. Well, this tells me just looking at this, x equals 0 and x equals 2 are both interesting. So at 0, something interesting is going on. At 2, something interesting is going on. Well, put in x equals 0 into this formula, I get 0 plus 2. So the graph is too high. Put in x equals 2 into this formula, I get 0 plus 2. So I've got now two symmetrical points on a symmetrical graph. So it's a U-shaped graph that's symmetrical, and maybe it's like this, or maybe it dips down below the x-axis, or maybe it just touches, who knows. But I can see from the picture that x equals 1 is where all the action's going on, because everything's symmetrical. So let me plug in x equals 1 to the original formula. I get uh, the y at x equals 1 is 1 minus 2 plus 2, which is 1. It's actually at 1, I know I'm 1 high, so my graph must actually be like this. And just staring at the picture, how many times does it cross the x-axis? Zero times. Yes, I do admit b squared minus 4ac is quicker, but I'm not interested in speed. I'd much rather I'm more interested in understanding. Uh, let's try another one. Maybe that makes me a weird algebra teacher. Um, here goes. Let's try y equals negative 3x squared plus 12x plus 5. How many times does that cross the x-axis? All right, I'm going to focus on interesting x values. Can I pull some out? Well, yeah, let's focus on the x part. I see a negative 3x in common, which leaves an x behind and a minus 4. And I still have a plus 5. Right there, that tells me x equals 0 and x equals 4. Interesting. In fact, if I put in 0 and 4, both of this big term goes to 0 plus 5. So it has value 5 at each of those two points. Two symmetrical points on a symmetrical graph. That's actually a downward facing u. That negative 3 tells me things are downward. Tells me, OK, without any further ado, they must cross the x-axis twice. So how many times does it cross the x-axis? Two times. That picture speaks a thousand words. Well, two words, two times. Uh, algebra books like to really test, can kids handle this by sort of you know, giving more interesting questions? You know, interesting such a subjective term. y equals 4x squared plus 8x plus k. Maybe the question now is find a value k so that this graph just touches the x-axis. Well, I'm just going to sketch the thing again. Pictures speak a thousand words. I'm going to look for interesting x values. So let's focus on the x part of this equation. Um, anything I can do. Well, I see a common factor of 4 and x. So let's pull out 4x. And there's still a plus k hanging around. This tells me x equals 0 and x equals negative 2 are both interesting. So here's negative 2 and here's 0. In fact, if I put in 0 to this formula or put in negative 2, I get this part of 0 plus k. Now, I'm not sure where the k is but I'll have two symmetrical points, k high. Now, this 4x squared tells me it's an upward-facing U-shaped graph, so it's got to be something like this coming upward. And the question was, find a value k so it just touches the x-axis. It tells me I want it to come down and just touch the x-axis like that. 
Well, everything's symmetrical. I know all the actions are going to happen at negative 1. So what I really want from this picture is a value of k so that when I put in negative 1, 0 comes out. Well, let's put x equals negative 1, 0 for y, and see what it tells us. So 0 would have to equal 4 times negative 1 squared plus h times negative 1 plus k. So 0 equals 4 minus 8 plus k. That tells me k equals 4 does the trick. Uh, let me do a, th a fourth example. I guess I'm up to example number four. Um, another type of question, which I haven't really seen in algebra books, but uh, it's, it's testing understanding more than, more than doing. Uh, y equals negative 2x squared whoops, uh, plus 8x pl whoops, x plus k. Scrawly writing, I'm so sorry. Find a value x so that negative 2x squared plus 8x plus k has largest value 43. All right, this time I want a graph that has largest value 43. Choose a value of k to make that happen. All right, well, draw a picture. And a good way to start drawing a picture is focus on interesting x values. Let's focus on the x part. I can see I can pull out, say, maybe a negative 2x. That leaves behind an x and a negative uh, 4. I still have plus k. So right now I see that x equals 0 and x equals 4 are interesting. 0 and 4. If I put in 0 and 4, this term is 0 plus k. So each of these has value k. Uh, maybe it's higher, maybe it's lower, maybe it's on the x. I'm not quite sure where it is. But, 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 I know that I'm going to have a downward facing u shaped graph that negative 2 tells me the steepness is negative. So I've got some graph like this, it might be higher or lower than this, I'm not quite sure. But all the action is happening at 2 because everything is symmetrical. So basically, I want a value of k so that, that this peak is happening at 43. That means the graph has largest value 43. So basically, it tells me when I put in x equals 2, I want y to be 43. Let's plug that into the equation and see what happens. y is 43 should equal putting in x equals 2, negative 8 plus 16 plus k. That tells me uh, k minus 8, uh, k plus 8, sorry, is uh, 43. That tells me k better be 35. You know, you don't need formulas. Just do common sense things, draw a picture. Pictures reveal so much more than formulas. and. Uh, once you've got a picture, just use your brain, just use your common sense and sort of nut your way through these questions and everything falls into place. I'd much rather have my students demonstrate intelligent thinking rather than plugging and chugging into formulas. I guess I have an opinion about this. All right, thanks so much.